Hello and welcome of course to another tune setup in Gran Turismo 7, and this time for those who watched my build for the TVR Tuscan, wherein you can earn 1.65 million every hour from racing at Le Mans, this is essentially the same method of earning cash, but with a different choice of car. So in other words, it's for those of you who would rather use something like the Camaro, and as I mentioned in that video, I'm going to be doing other builds as well. I've done one for an Aston, I've done one for a Maserati, so it's basically the same event but you could change up which vehicle you use. Now what I will say about this one, well two things really, one, this is nowhere near as powerful as it is stock because you have to restrict it so much. So I would say this is more the kind of car to use if you want a bit more of a challenge because it doesn't have as much straight line performance as some of the other options. The other thing is, and this one is really unfortunate, because I did not create the livery on this car. I think it looks great, but I didn't make it. In that TVR video, I gave a shout out to the person who made that livery and that build. Strangely though, if I look in my collection of styles, or if I try to content search it, I cannot find this livery again. So I can't shout out the person who made it. So I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe they deleted the original. I don't understand how I've still got it, if that's the case, but for whatever reason, I can't get it anymore. So, as far as the visuals go, you can run through what you can see here. Obviously, it has the wide body, it's got the additional chin splitters and the rims that are larger, all that kind of stuff. And as long as you fit all of those individual body components, you should get roughly the same performance points to begin with. Now, with that in mind, now, of course, we'll jump over to the tuning shop side of things, which is obviously more important technically. And we're going to work again from the extreme section and then go down the line. So I would recommend having a set of heavy wet tires. Some people have said about having intermediates. The choice is down to you. I tend to just get heavy wets because they're just the be all. You know, it just covers all the bases for whatever circumstance rather than having two sets pointlessly. But it's down to you. Feel free to try both. See what you prefer. Or, of course, if you already have a preference, go with that. As far as the racing parts, though, we've gone for the racing silencer, and I will freely admit part of that is for the visuals of it. For the brakes, I've gone for the drilled discs, then, of course, racing brake pads. You want the fully customised suspension, the clutch and flywheel, and the transmission. It has stage 4 weight reduction. Obviously, you have to do that from level 1 up to 4. Racing hard tyres as well which is what I fit it with as standard. That's what I start the event with, and that gets you to 699.3 performance points, as you can see there. Then for the next section under the semi-racing one, we've got the fully customized computer, and of course, the fully customizable diff with the aforementioned weight reduction in level three. For club sport, we have the power restrictor, which of course you will need for this, stage two of the weight and ballast as well. And then finally for the sports section, we have the stage one weight and it already has sports medium tires, which could come in useful for a different event. You never know. But as I said, the car already has that. So that's it for the parts and for the visual side of things. Now let's jump back into the home garage to show you the settings which I'm running. Now, as far as the tyres, like I said, I've gone for the hards first of all. If you swap to the rain ones, it does lower the points by a lot, like down to 660. But you definitely don't want to start the race with that for the sake of, for example, having more power. As far as suspension, we've got the ride height on 85mm on the front, 90mm on the back. I've left the anti-roll on 4. We've increased the compression to 38 reduced the expansion to 42, increased the frequency just a little to 2.5 and 2.7. For this particular car, I'm running half a degree of camber on the front, one degree on the rear with no rear toe, and the front is towed out by 10 degrees. As far as the diff, nothing special. In fact, I believe this is the numbers that it has automatically when you fit that diff. So again, if you don't like the handling of this one, you could try changing that up. Or if you already have a preference there, then by all means go for it. I happen to think this is one of the best handling options of car to kind of turn into this sort of race car. So that's the settings that I'm running. As far as the gearbox, you want the auto setting on 350 kilometers an hour, or at least that's what I've done. Then for the individual gears, 2.7, 1.8, 1.3, 0.99, 0.79, and 0.65 with a final drive of 3.7. Now, as I said, in a straight line, as you can kind of tell from its power, 466, 
with a decent amount of torque. The weight is also quite high as well, at just under 1400 kilos, so it is at a disadvantage compared to some of the others. Straight line speed, especially top end, is what you tend to really notice the difference on. It can still get up around like 160, 170, it's just a little bit more sluggish top end than some of the others, especially compared to something like the TVR. Now, in terms of all the restrictions and ballast and all that kind of stuff, you want to add 62 kilos of ballast. I would recommend putting that all the way to the back, which gets you just a little bit closer to a 50-50 distribution. As far as the power restrictor, take it down to 94%. For the ECU, set that to 70%, which is the lowest. You really do have to restrict this engine to get it down to the applicable level, unless of course you want to have a ton of weight, which I didn't. The downforce we've got the lowest possible on, because of course the wings and all that kind of stuff are mostly visual. And again, it's Le Mans that we're talking about primarily, so you do need some good top end speed. And for the rest, you can just see all the stuff that I fitted anyway. So now with all of that done, of course, we will jump over into the actual race. And for those who didn't watch the TVR video, I mean, if you did, you already know everything I'm going to say now, so you could even leave if you want to. But if you are new to the channel and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to jump out into career mode just to show you the race that I'm talking about. So go into the World Circuit section, of course, under Europe in particular when the game loads. Then we'll jump over to Le Mans. And then it's this event, of course. 700 points, the World Touring Car Championship. Or it's not a championship, it's the uh, it's a single event. And of course, it's a half an hour race, which seems steep for 550 grand. Of course, though, if you get a clean run, it's 825. Now, many, many people commented on that TVR video that there are better ways of earning cash, such as, for example, using a, a Tomahawk that's detuned in a Tokyo Expressway event, for example. You can earn, I believe, over 2 million credits an hour. That's absolutely valid, and if you're just looking to grind, then by all means go for it. As I think many of you understood, some might have missed the point, but I think many understood this tune is about earning a lot of cash, but also having fun at the same time. This is not just about grinding, it's a cool event on a cool track, and that's why I'm doing multiple tunes for it, so you can swap it up and play around with different cars and feel like you're actually having a proper race with a fairly well-matched vehicle, but getting really well paid for it. So if you do it twice in an hour, which of course is half an hour uh, either time, you'll be earning 1.65 million easy. Now, when it comes to this car, it will also depend on what you have your AI set on in terms of difficulty, especially with that slight lack of power and disadvantage in weight on the straights. So I'll leave it down to you as far as what AI level you want it set on. It does, however, make no difference to money. So unless you want to prove something to yourself, you definitely don't need it as high as possible. With that being said, I would recommend having the fuel use set as lean as possible, which is all the way up to level 6. That way you can pit in toward the end of lap 3. In other words, pretty much the same as the TVR. And of course, the event has variable weather. Generally, or in fact in my case, every single time I do the event, it does rain. Or at least it has a very wet section of the circuit, which for me pretty much always starts at the end of lap three or thereabouts. So that's why you absolutely need those tires. Even if the race doesn't have any rain, they're just worth having because on hards, you'll be all over the place even with traction control on. My recommendation, incidentally, as far as traction is even with rain tires, slapping on the traction control just makes your life even easier. Technically, you don't need it, but again, for less experienced drivers in particular. So ultimately, if you decide to use this tune, if you check out the other ones that I'm going to do or the TVR that I already have done, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. This is pretty much my go-to method for earning cash. It's not quite the best, technically, but I find it pretty fun and I get to use some pretty cool cars. So if you are new to the channel, of course, stick around for more like this. And if, again, you are new, then by all means, check out the other videos which I've already done, which might benefit you as well. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.